Hello and welcome back to the Grow to Save channel. Hope you are doing well. Things are going nice with these seedlings. However, it is one of the most depressing times as of now because I have to thin my babies. Everything that, and as you have, are probably experienced yourself, when you've put all the time, effort, and energy into getting these things going, you really hate to have to thin them out. And but they, but it has to be done, or you're gonna get stunted growth. I've already, I've already been thinning out some. That's what that pile is from that tray back there. And uh, some of the plants in that tray have not been doing super hot. And part of the reason why I believe is for one, one day I accidentally forgot to check water levels. Just one day. And it got to be too much for a couple of those plants, particularly the cucumbers, which is what's laying down right there. But also, I don't think that the cucumbers or the the um, Brussels sprouts in the far back really like that this heat mat. I, I don't think they really enjoy it very much. Um, that's kind of the problem that you get when you mix too many different types of seedlings together in the same trays. Some enjoy different environments, and you just you're gonna have some loss there. But anyways, when it comes down to doing the thinning, it's a pretty simple process. You essentially just want to leave one, your strongest plant per pod, and pull the other one up. It's that simple. And uh, it's, I was not wanting to let go, but it's got to. Anyways, the other thing that you can do is if they're too close to each other, you can just take your fingernails like that and just slice them off level with the soil and uh, that will work anyways hope you guys are blessed god bless you all i hope you're staying safe in the quarantine we are really looking forward to things opening back up here really soon getting everybody back to work and getting the economy rolling again um other than that i hope everybody is blessed food wise hope you are taking this stuff seriously uh once again i think that after really looking into stuff a little bit more i i think that what's going to happen food related is there will be a lull there will be some short There'll be a time when food is not as available as usual, but I do believe that it will come back. And in particular, I think that going into the growing seasons here, you know, if it was the opposite, if we were if we were coming into this in, say, like the fall, like during the harvest season, and then going all through winter without having the ability to grow anything, that could be a real problem. However, I think that where we're at right now, we are just blessed to be able to have the opportunity to start growing our food when there's our own food, when there's a potential food shortage from producers. So take that into mind. Be thankful. Be grateful. And here's the total of all the culling. It's kind of a lot, actually, just from a couple little trays. I hate that. I hate seeing all these die. But like I said, if you don't do it, you're going to regret it. Hello everyone, today is Sunday, April 26th. It is almost May and I'm getting pretty excited to get these plants moved outside here in the next couple weeks. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, but I wanted to shoot a quick update on here because I am presented with a challenge. And uh, you guys may be too. See these? I actually just shot a video just probably two or three days ago about how I thin these out and in a matter of about three days most of these plants have nearly tripled in size so if that doesn't tell you what thinning out will do for you I don't know what will but anyways what I wanted to talk about today is aphids and all of this white stuff all over here is diatomaceous earth it's just just that and essentially what happened was is I came in here earlier that might you might be able to see a few right there maybe maybe not it's kind of difficult to tell with all the powder all over everything plus most of them are covered now underneath this powder diatomaceous earth is a physical attacking uh, insecticide or you know bug repellent whatever you want to call it so if they crawl through it chances are it will just basically eat them up and destroy them that's why I've tried to sprinkle it on them, tried to sprinkle it around, got the fan blowing on them, trying to dust this stuff around a little bit. Um, unfortunately, where these came in from were some plants that I overwintered. You might be able to see 
a few of them on this tomato plant, maybe. But see, this plant right here is a Scotch bonnet plant. It was one of four that I attempted to overwinter, and it had been doing great. This particular plant had been doing excellent up until about a month ago, and uh, it had sprouted new leaves. It was doing fantastic. I was like, super excited to get this thing out there and start producing again early in the season for me. And unfortunately, uh, aphids came back. I had a, an aphid problem. These things brought aphids in with them over winter. I had an aphid problem at one point. It killed a couple of my other plants, I think, that and maybe just some other factors. And um, yeah, I thought I got rid of them. But this is another reason why you want to try to keep an eye on your plants and a close eye on them, especially your seedlings every couple of days. And one other thing that I will mention real quick is I have a video coming out. If you see here, the little two on here, I have these separated one and two as far as these seedlings. These seedlings and these seedlings, some of them were floating and some of them were sinking. The ones were, I think it was the ones were floating seeds and the twos were sinking if I'm not mistaken or maybe vice versa. I have to double check. However, I've been keeping track of these throughout my little experiment that I've done with them and I think that these in particular I don't know if you can really tell but these particular plants after I transferred them a few of them basically just died over the course of time whereas some other ones have just gone gotten really strong and grown pretty tall it's very same exact same plant it's just you know some of them got weak and died Others over here have not really seemed to grow as strong as some of these other ones, like these ones that are going nuts. However, they are more consistently healthy, including the scotch bonnets. Now, scotch bonnets, in my experience, are kind of difficult to grow, especially up north here in the winter. Um, and, I mean, not so much in the winter, but just up north here, period, because they're a very tropical plant, which is why I think this particular plant had so many problems. Is It flowered and everything after I had, had it sitting on the grow mat that was underneath here, like a, probably about a month and a half ago. And uh, I had to move it in order to get everything else started. I don't know if maybe it was the temperature shift or what, but scotch bonnets definitely liked to... Uh, be in warmer temperatures. They kind of like a specific setting and uh, I may lose that one up there. Hopefully all the rest of these will come through though. I absolutely love scotch bonnets. It's one of my very favorite peppers for flavor and they're not too hot so they just, just get a, a really good enjoyable pepper to eat. Anyways that is all for today. I hope that you guys are going doing well with your seedlings. And uh, I will post some updates about this later on about what I was able to do to, to accomplish um, getting re rid of the rest of these aphids. Hopefully I'll be able to make these survive until they get outside. Hey there, so I just wanted to showcase once again the size difference in these plants just since I... This was three days ago. It was on the 23rd. Today is the 26th that... Excuse, you excuse me, my kids are in the back here. Um, that I thin these out they just they're huge compared to that i held all of what i thinned out in one hand and took pictures of it and these things are a lot bigger now just in three days time so just wanted to emphasize how quickly that will change once you do the thinning out okay so today is monday april 27th and this is just kind of a quick vlog to keep track of how things look before I sprayed them with the neem oil. Today was the first treatment with neem oil. And this is how the plants look. Everything is looking pretty good thus far. Haven't really been looking too bad, save these, that weren't really going to survive anyway. Uh, but everything else, due to aphids, still seems to be looking pretty strong. Especially in the bigger cups. But the other main things that I wanted to be concerned with today are these, all my tomatoes and okra, everything else. Things are a little bit wet, so their leaves are kind of saggy because I just sprayed this stuff. It's kind of strong to smell in here right now, actually. But um, 
and these aphids were starting to get all over everything. So I sprayed them all with the neem oil today. Uh, I don't know how much you can see back back underneath here. But this is everything. So uh, those leaves were falling off of these plants here. Um, as I'd been kind of messing with them, they were stressed out from the other day after the cuttings. But once again, these things are still getting just huge. So we will see if there are any changes due to burn from the neem oil or anything else in the next either the next few hours or by tomorrow, 24 hours. All right, today is April 29th. And as you can probably tell by now, by this video, I'm just shooting some uh, random updates. Look how big these things have gotten now. They're, they're another, at least another inch or so tall. Taller than they were a few days ago. Anyway, the point of this video, I don't know if you can really see them, but I came in here and applied a neem oil application because I'm having trouble with aphids and I applied an application Monday I kind of dusted off the diatomaceous earth sitting back there and it's like they enjoy the neem oil I just sprayed another application and I'm going to come back in here in a few hours and if they're not like dying or close to dead I am applying diatomaceous earth all over again because they seem to be under control with that but I mean I have applied soapy water, I've applied diatomaceous earth, I've applied neem oil two days ago and they took that like as a joke <laughs> and now just another application of neem oil and if things aren't going better by this afternoon it's back to diatomaceous earth. I can't believe how frustrating this is. Welcome back to Grow to Save. Today's May 1st and I am finally starting to harden off these peppers. It's a beautiful beautiful day slightly chilly i'd say it's probably like upper 50s maybe low 60s today um but yeah plants are finally getting outside i am pretty uh pretty upset with the way things have turned out with these uh, mainly due to the aphid infestation i have applied two applications of neem oil they've been dusted with uh this diatomaceous earth just a number of times at this point I've sprayed them down with a mixture of soap and water, of soap, water, and alcohol. <laughs> I've done just about everything I can, barring just coming over and just physically combing over each and every individual plant uh, by hand and to try to pick these aphids off. And I've even done that with a few of them just to try to alleviate some of the pressures. Um, and they are, they're still just fighting like crazy. These, these aphids just acted like they were just drinking the neem oil, which is uh, just unfathomable. It's just crazy. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm really, 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 really hoping that now that they're starting to get hardened off, that they will become a little bit stronger and they will have a little resistance, a uh, better resistance after being outside for the next week or so. Hopefully the weather will hold up. Uh, I need to check to find out when it's supposed to be rainy again. But yeah, as of now, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to take you guys back and show you what has started to sprout. All right, so I noticed that the other day some of these direct sowed plants, these are sugar snap and snow peas, just a couple rows of them going underneath this kind of trellis setup. This is, by the way, this is just a piece of hog fencing from Tractor Supply. Uh, it's less than 20 bucks, pretty heavy duty, little piece of trellis. Yeah, it worked pretty good last year for my cucumbers when I stood it up and turned it vertical. Cucumbers climbed all the way up that and were hanging over the other side so um, yeah it works great but those are the, the peas that I have right now that were direct sowed and then over here I'm starting to get a little bit of the kale coming up you can see some of it here multiple seeds planted so these are just the first few little sprouts there's some Swiss chard over there and over there and right here all is starting to come out I'm going to have to thin this out once it starts to really come in, but things are looking beautiful and I'm really excited once I get uh, those peppers hardened off, they're going to be transplanted to these bigger pots and we'll start moving and the tomatoes that I'm starting 
most of those will grow will go into self-watering buckets which I have here and some of them will probably go directly in the ground right over there so Hey guys, hope the wind isn't too bad. I just got done just demolishing a bunch of aphids off of all my plants by hand, individually. It was just murder for all these little guys. And uh, I tried not to leave any of them that I could see, so hopefully I got them all. But I want to say something about this experiment. I, don't, I can't remember exactly which one was which, which one was floating, which one was sinking. But um, it's pretty clear that for the number one batch, the only ones that survived I only have one out of all this. It's the uh, Scotch bonnet. Everything else was the cross pollinated. And um, over here, the number two batch, everything has survived, and especially the, uh, the Scotch bonnets. They seem to be doing particularly okay over here. So. I think that was, I'm going to call it at that, I think that pretty much concludes, you know, which one is uh, going to produce the stronger uh, of the seed for uh, whichever one was which. I really can't remember. I'm going to have to go back and look at the uh, video to find out which one was which. Um, so, I, so I can't say which one right now was floating or sinking one way or the other. But one thing that I do want to say is that I'm about to do another experiment because these guys have been struggling so bad because they look like they've been struggling so hard against the aphids and everything so so bad and I don't have the best of lighting in there you saw my setup that lighting is definitely not the best um, so I'm glad to have them out here hardening off now they have some actual sunshine so I'm really grateful to have them out here but I want to do another quick experiment with some uh, rooting hormone to see if I can get any of them to uh, basically just uh, you know maybe get a little bit stronger a little bit quicker so what I'm gonna do is I have just a tiny little spoon and I'm gonna put it around the base of the soil and uh, that's basically gonna be it I think what I'm gonna do is this is a uh, this one right here is definitely a cross pollinated so what I'm going to do is, and I know it's on this end, the only reason I'm keeping all of these uh, ones that were dead in here is just to keep the, the weight of the tray even for when I move it around. Um, but I think, I think this is a uh, scotch bonnet. So I'll move one of those over here, or I'll just turn the thing around and do it so I make sure that I keep track of which one was which. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do one of these little quick experiments to see which one, uh, if either of them take, and if either of them take better than the other ones. So just look forward to this, to the results of this later. All right, so just so I can keep track of this for myself and have reference for later, this is the one that is getting the treatment on this end. That's obvious, pretty obvious. It's on the only one that's living on the end of the dead ones. Um, the one that's getting treated on this end, all of these down here, the scotch bonnets, and to keep like, like kind together, we're doing the experiment on the cross pollinated. So it's the one, this one's mark number one, this one's mark number two. I already checked on this side. This one doesn't have any markings. So uh, this one looks horrible. I hope he survives. And also, I wanted to mention that I kind of dug down around the base of the of each plant. This where I'm going to do it, and I'm going to cover it back up with the soil. Um, just so I can kind of have it so because the top of the soil pretty much stays moist as it's absorbing from the bottom down there so and this stuff says to keep it moist so uh, that's how I'm gonna do it okay so today is May 7th kind of crazy to think it's already May uh, and we have another freeze warning coming so hopefully the things I have in the ground outside are gonna be okay but this is where we're at as far as the seedlings go. For They're about to get transferred here in the next day, couple days. Um, maybe even as soon as tomorrow we will we'll see. This one's getting huge. This one's somewhere probably around 8 or 9 inch mark. And I've pulled my other peppers out of here. I've been having a massive problem with aphids. And uh, most of these plants have not really been affected except for the cucumbers you can even see some of the aphids right there 
on top. Just let me see if you can zoom in just a little bit. Yeah, and I don't even care at this point because these cucumbers, <laughs> they weren't going to make it. I was just at Tractor Supply a few days ago. I saw they had some cucumbers, so I may go pick some of them up there or any other nursery. I still have not tried to visit a nursery yet. I just anticipate that being crazy, and I got what I need here. So, um, But anyways, the pepper plants, if you can see them down there, are being hardened off. So um, they... <laughs> They have had such a bad problem with aphids. Like they, they're nearly dead, actually, and I'm so, so disappointed because I've been working on them since early February. So, for basically all of February, March, April, and now into May, I've been working on them and just babying them as much as I can, and they're they're close to dead. Uh, but probably will have a few survive, but just man, that's so discouraging. And uh, by the way, I want to mention I'm, I'm sorry for not always being able to upload that often. Uh, one thing I will say is I'm not going to upload if I don't have anything to say. I'm not going to try to just upload every you know a video every week just for the sake of uploading. Pretty much only going to upload when I have something either important to say or uh, if there's something like an update from the garden that's you know substantial that's worth putting out there. So I realized that today is actually two weeks exactly since I thinned those seedlings so you can take that uh, into account when you see the size difference from the beginning of the video to the end but I did want to go ahead and come out here and film what's been happening um, this particular tray the, the number one tray has just been having it so rough and I think maybe only those two peppers right there will make it uh, whereas everything else has pretty much died <laughs> just having such a bad time with aphids i have sprayed these guys with neem oil i've sprayed them with alcohol water and soap with just water and soap with diatomaceous earth i've done so many different things to try to keep the aphids under control and they've just been a nightmare i sprayed them i did increase the dosage I, one of the things was with the first round of spray i didn't want to like burn the plants or anything so i i went a little bit light i, I still think i've somewhat followed the directions for the uh, dosage but I did go a little bit light to try not to burn these plants and I did spray them again uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before with a, a stronger dose of neem oil and I have not had a problem that I've really seen with aphids since not really um, let me see down there I don't think so um, by the way I put these these are just um, barbecue skewers it was really windy today so i wanted to give them something to hold on to but yeah really 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 disappointed really just hoping a few of these will survive please don't judge me because of my hair um it ain't got did because of covid so yeah but anyway um i will say that that last experiment that i mentioned with the rooting hormone total fail <laughs> don't do that please save yourself the heartache because now i'm down two more pepper plants they died so fast it's not even funny uh but i did want to mention that you know as far as peppers go i've grown peppers every year i've been gardening and i've always had a great deal of success with the peppers and this year is my first year i mean had this happened my first year ever growing i would be probably so disappointed that i would never grow them again or I, that I wouldn't try in the future, at least not as hard. So um, I just will say that for you to take into your own account, that if you're struggling with something, you know, learn what you can, do what you can with it, but don't get so discouraged that you never try to grow it again. Uh, besides that, uh, peppers really are not going to be like a survival food this year. I've got so many other things going in the ground and going in uh, containers and stuff this year that uh, if I'm going to have to live out of my garden, I'm not really going to be living off peppers. They do provide great vitamin C content, for those of you who don't know that already. Uh, I've heard it said that a jalapeno has four times the vitamin C content that an orange does. Don't know if that's verified or not, but sounds good. So, I mean, I know that they're high in, uh, high in vitamin C anyways. Um, and as well as that capsaicin is good for you if you want to try to lose weight or whatever else. Plus, they're just fun. 
But anyways, I hope that if this video resonated with you, that you will like it, share it, and subscribe. And uh, hopefully, that you know, if you did get something out of it, that whoever you share it with will get something out of it as well. Love you guys. God bless all of you. I hope you are all staying safe out there in the midst of this, of this COVID mess. Remember to grow big, grow home, and grow to save. Love y'all. Have a great day.